That's a guy I like a lot. Now, for those of you that like myself, I'm a movie freak. This guy. You see this guy? I, I like this guy a lot. I don't know if you like James Bond. <laughs> I think I've seen all the James Bond movies. I've seen every one of them. But the reason why I like James Bond is because of the, of the role that he plays. This is the original spy. <laughs> you know, I was asking the Lord after Sponge Room. I, I did get time to ask the Lord for what to preach this Sunday. But after Sponge Room, I went to the scriptures and the Lord began to deal with me about the spies. You know, there's this negative connotation to spies. Espionage. It is a spies and they will, you know. But I want to give you, uh, before I read the scripture, an understanding of spies. Because when we hear the word spies, what comes to mind is that they are enemies. And for some reason that might be true. But, but a spy is not necessarily a mole. A spy is someone who represents a country and then goes into another nation to explore the land. And when they go into another nation, they, don't, they are not conspicuous. You don't know that they are spies. Is there any spy in the church? I need to know first. <laughs> I know that, that you are a spy. You are a mole. You are a mole. Hazel is the mole. Okay. So a spy is someone who represents a country, but not an amb ambassador. An ambassador represents a country in another country, and you know an, ambass um, an ambassador. But a spy is someone who comes to gather intelligent information about their government, about their leadership, about their policies, about their constitution. They gather this, but this guy is actually called a double agent. Because this guy works for different people at the same time. And I pray there's no double agent here. We, we don't need agents of light. We don't need no double agents. We don't need darkness and light. Amen, church? Amen. So a spy is someone who represents his country, goes into another nation for just one purpose. Somebody say information. information. And whatever information he gathers, that is what he uses to strategize an attack. Again, are you hearing me, church? Whatever information he gathers, that is what he would use to strategize an attack. He gathers an information. It's England. You know, in Brixton area, there's no security there. Oh, Essex. The beat, no, it's not, no, and they gather, oh, like, come, come, come down to Essex. Yeah, no security. They gather all the information that they can gather, and they, that's what they call stratagem. They begin to strategize. Okay, we're going to go through this place and through the place. And one of the reasons why Babylon fell... Do you know as a study of the Bible that no, no empire conquered Babylon by fight? Babylon was taken overnight. But Chazza was having fun with the princes and enjoying with, uh, with God's ornament in the, from the temple. And suddenly a hand wrote on the wall, take a man over for sin. This night the kingdom shall be taken. A guy by the name of Ugbaru. Ugbaru was the captain of the Persian army. And what Ugbari had done, he had found that there is a leakage of a hole by the Tigris you know, Canal. And what he had done, he investigated the hole and said, Whoa, if we can dig a cistern in this hole, we can, we can take this nation without a fight. That night, Babylon was taken away because of an intelligent agent who understood the nooks and crannies of Babylon. The enemy do not just come into your life and win the war against you. He looks for nook and crannies and finds out your weakest points and your weakest link. And they'll begin to strategize on the weak link. The enemy will never come, to your, come through your great suit, your strong suit. It comes through the weak suit. And every one of us, right, that we have to fortify our walls. Because the enemy will find that little one. Oh my God, there's a hole now. But the spy you want to talk about today is a good spy. Somebody say the good spy. The spy that I want to talk about today is the spy, the grace the Lord will give you and I today to enter into our promise and have a sneak preview of our promise. Amen. Amen. This is my typical example. How many of you go to cinema? You like watch movies? Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. We need to have a movie night again then? Yes. Oh, Spain. 
Anyway, um, if you go to, to the cinema to watch a movie, it starts at 10 o'clock, right? You don't have to go there at 10 o'clock. Probably might get there at like 10.30. Why? Half an hour is an advert. But you hear what the advert does? The advert is actually strategic. Now, because you love the movie that you want to watch, but all the adverts come in your face, why? Just to prepare you to watch again. So the advert you find when watching the movies are called the sneak preview. Somebody says sneak preview. Sneak preview. The purpose of the sneak preview is to have a glimpse of what you're about to pay for again. So whilst you're watching, mana, 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 then you see something that's on the TV. Wow, wow, that's a nice movie. So whilst you are there, what, what, getting ready for James Bond to play, you are almost looking at your diary again for the next movie to watch because of what you've seen on TV. Why? It's like it whets your appetite. You're like, I need to watch this movie again. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus or God in the scripture used the same strategy to whet the appetite of the believers. Numbers chapter number 13 quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is excited for the miracle that is happening tomorrow? Yeah. Every single day has a miracle on it. Yeah. Who is excited for the miracle for tomorrow? Yeah. Amen, church. Oh, by the way, if you are turning your Bible to the New Testament, Numbers is in the Old Testament, okay? I just actually let you know, I see someone flipping the Bible so far. Like, that, that looks like you're flipping to, for, to Luke. Numbers chapter number 13. Amen. Amen, church? Amen. Okay. Let's see what you, before you go to Numbers, the, oh, the, oh, keep it there. I'm going to read it myself. Jesus gave a parable. And see what Jesus says in, don't, don't, don't stop, just listen to me. Don't turn the Bibles. In Luke chapter number 14, verse 20, verse 30, or verse 31. What king, this is Jesus speaking, what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first? And consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. What Jesus was saying, a man who is ready to wage war must first consider the attack of his enemies. The man who wants to wage war must first discern the strategy of the enemy. You see, that's what you call praying amidst. And many Christians pray amidst. You pray with that strategy. The word Bible says, for we are not ignorant of the? The word devices when translated is the word strategon, which is strategy. We are not ignorant of the strategies of the enemy. The Bible says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the? Whilst it's called strategy. We put all the old armor, not your favorite one, by the way. Because some like helmet, they don't like breastplate. Some like breastplate, they don't like sword. But the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God in order to contend against the stratagem of the devil. The devil has strategy. He's lost the authority, but has strategy. And what he does, he speaks to you because he knows he has no power. Oh, you're not good enough for the job. Oh, you cannot make this. You cannot, and begins to speak because he knows that once he puts his mouth in your ears, he's going to win the war against you. And look at the woman in the garden, the woman whom the Lord blessed. And then that one serpent came and started having conversations, strategy. If he can talk to you, he will change your mind. So that's what the Bible says. Now, if you have your Bibles, Numbers chapter number 13. And um, I pray this message bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord spoke to Moses. See, have you ever read the Bible before and, and you hear the word, the Lord spoke, right? Have you thought about it? How did the Lord speak? No, we just read the Bible and just the Lord spoke. But how did he speak? How, have you thought about it really? The Lord spoke to Moses. How did the Lord speak to Moses? Is it a voice from heaven? Moses! You know, you know, but what comes to mind when you hear the Lord spoke to Moses? What are the kind of conversation come to your mind? What would say stuff like the Lord spoke to Abraham? How do you think the Lord spoke to Abraham? Is it like a big voice from heaven? Bible says, the writer of Hebrews says that God at various times spoke through the prophets in various ways. So there are different ways that the Lord speaks to us. Sometimes in dreams. Sometimes in visions. Sometimes a word of knowledge. Sometimes by friends and families. Sometimes by intuition. 
But the Lord speaks. You see, stop expecting a voice to break the clouds and scream, Amanda! It's only in Hollywood if I stop. I don't know if you have watched Hollywood. Please, don't take it seriously, I beg you. I, 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 my, 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 my wife went out to see a friend of theirs that's going back, going back home. And I stayed in my office yesterday now because I was, for some reason I was hungry. I didn't want to go to the kitchen. So I just stayed there. I was just having yogurt. You know, I was asking if this yogurt had alcohol. Because I don't know what I was seeing on TV. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you a lie. It was a Nollywood movie I, wa- I was watching. It was a ghost. And this ghost had Brazilian weave. <laughs> or weave. No other for lie. Right. This ghost, this ghost, you know what I mean? This ghost, you know what they call Okada in Nigeria, a, a motorbike, motorbike? A ghost was chasing a man on a motorbike, a ghost. The guy was driving a car, a ghost stopped a motorbike, a ghost entered a motorbike, and a ghost was a, a, a spirit. I, I, I looked at the yogurt and asked, this, this, is, this is alcohol free. Because I can't believe it. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Uh, sometimes when I want to laugh, I just watch another people just to laugh. Oh, Lord, Father, help me. <laughs> and the Bible says, and the Lord spoke to me. And, and, and they, the reason for this question is this. How many of you are gifted in dreams? Okay, that's a good one, right? How many of you are gifted in visions and dreams? No, visions and dreams. Okay, how many of you are gifted in visions? Okay. Word of knowledge. Okay, descending of spirits. Okay, how many of you would consider yourself a seer? Oh, we have a seeing church. God is kind, amen. amen. How many of you are prophetic? Every hand should be up, to be honest. Amen. Okay, think about it this way. The way the Lord spoke to Moses is he speaks to people today. So in your dream, take it very seriously. And the Lord wants me here for one minute. You know, that's what you call the, the word a dreamer. Bible says that the Lord blesses us and gives us intels via dreams and visions. Um, but that's what you call the enemy. How many of you dream and don't remember? I'll say it again. Hear me. How many of you dream and don't remember? It is, okay, good. How many of you dream and remember everything? Yeah. Lift your hands well. You don't remember, you dream, but sometimes you don't get the full picture. Okay, hear me. It is better not to remember anything at all than to remember part of it. Hear me, for dreamers. That is what you call focus and accommodation. Those of you that know physics. The camera has what you call focus, which means that it blows out every other part and focuses on the person, right? It blows out every other part. The reason for focus is because that is the, that is the, that is the, that's what I want to talk about. I want to focus on that. That doesn't mean that other parts are not being covered. For instance, I'm looking at you there, but I see what's going on here. Everything at all is called accommodation, right? Everything around my, I expect accommodation. But I'm looking at one person there, focused. Amen. See, that's what you call dream thieves. Dream thieves are demonic system, you know what I mean, that do not steal your dream. They steal your focus. You know what I mean? They steal your focus and leave you with accommodation, the things that do not matter. So that when you wake up, you don't pray. In your mind, okay, I, 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 I remember some parts. So you wake up and don't pray. It's okay, I, I, I knew I dreamt. I don't have the full picture, but I remember because of that, you don't pray. Because you feel, I remember some part. But if the devil was to take out all your dreams, you wake up and you pray. So it compensates you with accommodation that is not part of the future. That's what you call the dream thief. The dream thief will come and creep your sleep. Whenever you have a dream and you don't remember, it's prophetic. The devil never steals anything but prophetic dreams. Whenever you have a dream and you don't remember, the devil is stealing what God promised you already. So when you have a dream and you don't pray to remember, that's one thing I prayed and I prayed every single time, Lord God, give me retention. The ability to wake up. Sometimes I have my phone on my side. I wake up and I record. 
Because the devil will come and cripple God's prophetic assignment. So what the devil tries to do to those of you that are dreamers, he allows you to remember the parts that are not important. So you wake up and say, um, I, 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 I know. I, but I, but, but. So you get clearly the parts that are not important, the accommodation. But you don't pray why, because it compensates you with that. Whenever, there are a few things, maybe I might teach on dreams in a few days to come. There are a few things you need to understand about your night. That's why you call the lily, night spirits. A night spirit will come in different forms like incubus and succubus. Sometimes sex demon. Sometimes perverse demon. Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night. And it, but, 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 but let me make this very clear. I wish you had a dream class. Yes. Yes. Understand this. Dreams are not always standalone. Sometimes dreams are continuations of other dreams. The reason why sometimes you don't understand your dream is because you are trying to interpret what you dreamt yesterday. But you must interpret it based on the full picture and not a pixel. Because the reason why you don't understand your dream is because it's connected to a previous dream and pre previous dream. So you have to go back to the history of your dream and understand the root cause of your dreams. Amen. So a lot of people try to interpret their dream as standalone. I, I, I don't understand why I found myself in this house. But a few days ago, Ask for the dream. And also, I'm going to see this on the last dream. Also, remember, see how you dream. Are you ready, church? Yeah. Your eyes, naturally, because of light and reflections, your eyes capture intels. You may not know. I'm seeing my wife having red and blue right now. I'm seeing a white on white. Your eyes, naturally, will capture this information and store your mind. You don't know. In your subconscious state, it begins to play out again. So that you find yourself having a dream in a red house. But the reason why you had a red house is because you saw a red cloth. Or you saw so the colors that you've captured in the day begin to play out in your subconscious. Why? Because you cannot control your dream. So not all dreams are prophetic. Sometimes you just watch Netflix too late. Or yet pandemic before you slept. But the reason for this, the Bible says, I, I, I probably might do, we might do dream interpretation sometime soon. Um, but, but let me warn you, the best place to interpret your dream is not Google. Don't go on Google, don't do that. And the best interpreter of your dream is you. An interpreter will interpret your dream based on your own experiences. So when you tell an interpreter your dream, they tend to interpret it based on how they understand. For instance, where I come from, I, we don't like snake. I don't like snake. I don't like it. But I've seen in this country people have snake as pets. Where I come from, if I see a black cat in a dream, I'm running. It's a demon. But in this country, people like cats, right? If an interpreter has a snake as a pet, they will never demonize the dream. But if an African like myself sees a snake in a dream, that's an enemy fighting me. So interpreters interpret dream based on their revelation. The distance between a dreamer and an interpreter is called consultation. And consultation is when the interpreter asks what this means to you. What does snake mean to you? Why? The best way to interpret your dream is have a one-to-one -one because sometimes the dreams that you, dreams, that you dream are not literally your dream. They are connection to altars, connection to your father, connection to your mother. So you cannot interpret dream based on a standalone. So if I was to interpret your dream, I'm going to sit with you. All right. What's your name? Were you, but what's your name? You go to church? Your parents? What's their faith? Are they Christians? Do you have altars in your house? Did your father do this? I would investigate everything because sometimes your dream is a product of foundation that has not been dealt with. Are you hearing me? Sometimes your dreams are foundations that have not been dealt with. People say stuff like, Apostle, I keep seeing myself wearing school uniform. Is it bad? It's not always bad. It depends on the context of the dream. Oh, I remember when I was younger, the kind of slap I received for eating in the dream. I probably tell you, you've eaten witchcraft. Come, come. It will conk your head. When my mom conked your head, you would dream inst instantly. <laughs> you know, you know Af African parents, what they do, they will, <laughs> they will pin both legs on their leg. You're here. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But again, we'll, we'll talk about it another time. I've got just seven minutes ago. The Bible says that the Lord spoke to Moses. I pray, Lord Jesus, that everyone that is gifted with dreams, 
Lord, you will activate even precision in the name of Jesus. And we'll come against the dream thief in the name of Jesus. You will dream, dream, and you will remember. Amen. Amen. Whenever you have a sexual dream, it's because the enemy is taking some stuff from you. Amen. Yeah, it's very important. Very, very important. So, yeah, we'll talk about it sometime soon. Some dreams are, some dreams are really... And that's what you call repeated continuous dream. You dream, you wake up, use the toilet, you continue again the same dream. That's the reason why, okay? There's a part of, your, part of your mind that plays in your sleep as well. So that's another day. Amen? Amen? And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy out the land of Canaan. You know, I don't know the lady's name. If you've watched James Bond, there's a lady, this white lady. It's always sending on errands. Yeah. What's her name? Miss Money what? Miss Money Penny. Okay, Miss Money Penny. The Lord said to Moses, send men to spy out the land. Now, there are a lot of things here. The word send men is the word shaliak in the Hebrew. The word shaliak is the same word as apostolos, which is the sent ones. See what apostles do. Apostles are different from prophets. Apostles, their mandate is to explore or spy lands. An apostle is sent to spy lands. What I mean, spy lands, they are, set, they, they are sent to infiltrate a culture. Anyway, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. This doesn't make sense to me. You know the reason why? Why would God send men to spy what he's giving them? Why would he spy the, why, why would he tell them, go spy the land that I'm, I'm giving you? But if you look at the last verse of chapter number 12, it says, And afterward, the people moved from Azeroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. Paran is close to Kadesh Barnea. The word Paran means a dark place. Amen. A dark place. And the Lord understood that Israel has been in a dark place in a very long time, like you and I. And a lot of them have made up their mind that this is my, this is my inheritance. I'm going to stay in darkness. And what the Lord did, the Lord promised them, listen, I will leave you in this darkness. I've got something for you called the land that flows with milk and honey. But before you inherit the land, you have to go through the process. Amen. Amen. The reason why the Lord showed them was to tell them this is your blessing, but you have to go through the process. Somebody say the process. It's interesting how we like the land that flows with milk and honey, but we don't like the work. So the Lord told them, I am for real. This is the land, but you have to work for it. You have to go through the process. Because it's not going to come easy on you. The Bible says, just catch, the Bible says, the land that I'm giving to them, each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every, lead, every man a leader among them. So Moses gathered 12 tribes and call all the leaders and say, well, the Lord is giving us the land of Canaan. So get a guy from your, from your tribe, from your tribe, and they had 12 tribes. And from verse number, actually the Bible says, so Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, and all of them who were the heads of the children of Israel. And Moses lifted up, listed their names, okay? The Bible says in verse number 16, these are the names of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses caught Oshia, the son of Nun, Joshua. 17. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and say to them, follow me, and say to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in are strong or weak. Few or many. Whether the land they dwell is good or bad. Whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds. Whether the land is rich or poor. Who wants a rich land here? Amen. Who wants a poor land? None of you. Amen. <laughs> and whether there are forests or there are not. Be of good courage. And bring some of the fruits of the land. Okay. I will give you the prophetic symbolism of this and the time. Bring some of the fruit of the lamb. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. Somebody say first ripe grapes. 
Everything in the Bible is there by intentional design. There was no point for uh, Moses writing about this first right group. The reason why he's there for. It was the season of the first ripe grapes. Now, one of the things that was known in Canaan back in the day was the fruits, the juice, the pressed juice, the wine and the vine and all of these things. And the Lord Moses said to the guys, when you go there, please bring fruit of the land. The fruit of the land. The first ripe grapes are usually, follow, now you will know the prophetic symbol of this, are usually harvested the last week in the month of July. Follow me. Between the last week of July and the first week of August was the best time to harvest the first ripe grapes. Somebody say ripe grapes. The reason why they say the season of the first ripe grapes is because there were two seasons. There is a season of a sour grape. Uh, it's a time, you know, I don't know about you, you know, it's tangling sour grapes. But they say, make sure you go to the season of the first ripe grapes. There were types of grapes there. There are the sour grapes, and that they are the first ripe grapes, and that they are the other grapes. The first ripe grapes are the grapes that are the sweetest. And they have to be produced at a certain time in the year. And the Lord said to Moses to tell the guy, don't go before, don't go after, but go in my timing. Are you hearing me, church? I believe that the blessing that has your name on it, some people will miss it because they are too in a hurry. Some people will miss it because they are too slow. The best way to understand what God is doing for you with your name on it is that you walk according to his time. Somebody say it's time. time. So I want to beg you, ladies and gentlemen, when your friends are celebrating, it's their time, not your time. So don't jump into what they are doing because you see them prosper. You better wait so that you don't get cages. Remember the three types of grape. The sour grape before, the true grape at first, and then the rotten grape later. The sour grape are the grape that you, go, you take before time. And when you take the sour grape, it's so acidic, it can kill you. The sour grape will burn your lip, and people will know that you've taken on the sour grape. Why? Because you've jumped into a system or a season that God never de- de- desired for you. Those of you that are jumping before your time, be careful that you don't jump out of the womb before your water breaks. <laughs> because once you do that, you give birth to a premature. So understand this, the Bible said the first ripe grape, not the second one. So there is a group of people that like the first thing that can be very careful of trend. Just because it's trending doesn't mean it has your name on it. And a lot of you, you've literally broken your prophetic promises. Why? Because you left your track and went into trend. It will burn you. It will peel up your skin. And you know a man has eaten of the grape. Why? Because they've eaten of the sour grape. Not ripe enough. And I want to encourage you today for those of you watching me and online and in church. Hear me. I understand that time is ticking. And I understand that I've been waiting for too long. And I understand my friends are celebrating. But one thing comes to mind. That when is my time, it's my turn. Are you getting me, church? I don't have to jump the corner. Because I know that if God visits my neighbor, he's in the neighborhood. So the, the grape that is a sour grape, see a lot of you are in sour moments of your lives because you, you, you were so quick to jump. You had no patience to make it ripe. You don't have the patience to, I like banana. I like, like she, my wife will come from work and she buy me, I love bananas a lot. She's like, okay, bananas and mangoes, actually mangoes and bananas in that order. And sometimes she brings the banana green. I don't know, like, why, is it, why not make it red? She, she buys it to leave at home. And sometimes, because I'm in a hurry to have banana, I just, I just don't care whether it's green. I just open it. But, 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 but see, see the problem there? The, the problem is not just the peeling the green banana. When the banana is green, it's hard to peel. You hear me, church? 
and, and sometimes when you try to peel the banana, you break the banana. Because you're not in a hurry for life to process it so until it matures. And sometimes I break the banana and not enjoy the banana because it's not ripe. If, I've only, if I'd only waited one more day, maybe it would turn from green to yellow. But because I was so in a hurry, I broke it and then I gave myself unnecessary stress. <laughs> Amen. One, two. Unnecessary stress. So I was in a hurry. I was in a hurry. And I want to get this banana and boom, it's green. It's not nice. Then I have my mouth sour. You know, have you seen that green banana before? It's terrible. It's bad. You know, when he, even when you wake up in the morning, you go, it's harsh. Why? Because you've just consumed something that has a time on it. Then there is the first ripe fruit. This is the grape that is producing its yield in its time. I'm not too late and I'm not too early. I'm in the kairos of God. I'm in the timing of God. When my friends are celebrating, well done to you, it's your time. And when it's my time, it's going to be my turn as well. I don't have to jump out of the track because you are celebrating. I see every single time. Please, I beg you. Instagram are people living their false life, not their real life, sir. Because no one will put on Instagram what's going on in their bedroom or in their houses, sir. A lot of people have turned from their track because of someone else's false life on Instagram. Sir. So understand this, church, that when it's your time, there is no devil. Hear me again. When it's your time, there is no devil that can stand against you. When it's your time, Time is your turn. Somebody said, my time and my turn. My time and my turn. My time and my turn. When is your time? No hell can stop you. You have a right to tell the devil, where were you when I was struggling? Listen, I know that they've invited you, young women. I feel like releasing the word of the Lord. Your friends have invited you for the baby shower and invited you for the wedding. And every single time you're part of the briar trail, briar trail, briar trail, you ask God, but where will, be, where will it be my time? See, just keep celebrating your friends. Keep celebrating. Don't envy them. Don't jealous them. Just keep celebrating them. Because when God comes for you, uh, the world will turn and say, indeed, uh, this is your turn and this is your time. Say yes, Lord. So the Lord said to them, make sure it's the first one. Make sure it's not before or after. Make sure it's the first ripe one. Because if the one before is sour, the one after is rotten. That banana was green yesterday. Now it's red today. Tomorrow it might become black. When you eat it as black and green, you don't get the real stuff. Because one is sour and one is not nice. Spoiled. And when it stays too long, you find sassin maggots. Why? Let me speak to those of you here that you are overdue your breakthrough but just not ready to walk into it yet. Hear me? It is not the time to be lazy. It is not the time to procrastinate. It is not the time to pend and suspend. It is the time to walk into your supernatural provision. What has God given you? What has God called you to do? You are still wasting time. You sleep and wake up every day and nothing is being done. It is time to wake up and put up the TV and wake up and get yourself to do some work. You keep sleeping and snoring and nothing is happening every day. But 24 hours a day and you sleep sleep all day producing nothing God where will life change but you are sleeping God make me better but you are sleeping God bless my hands but you are sleeping don't be like that man who doesn't know how to count the cost you be in a space where you're watching her Lord I don't want to be too early I don't want to be too late I want to walk in your time so the Lord say to them make sure you bring something that is in vogue somebody said my turn my time. my time. I want to prophesy to someone here who feel like you've passed your time. In God, there is nothing like you've passed your time. Because God can pull you back into his time. Yeah. The Bible says that he makes all be things beautiful in his own time, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? And there were some said, Apostle, I missed it. Huh? I was slow. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Huh? Those are the ones God are looking for. God is looking for the one that felt like if I had done this five years ago, if I had done this three years ago, I made a mistake. Huh? But in God, there is no mistake. Huh? It is the all-knowing God. Huh? It is the God that knows your end from your beginning. Huh? So if you thought you've made a mistake, that's right, because God is going to turn your mistake into a miracle. Are you hearing me, church? Huh? God will turn your mistake 
hallelujah and make your mistake a miracle are you hearing me church i say it again god will turn your mistake and make your mistake a miracle for those of you saying apostle it might be too late i like to say this every time whatever is late is the latest and i've come to prophesy that god is working a miracle in your name say yes lord Say to them, make sure you bring the first grape. Bring the the one that the one that is the, 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 that tastes nice and is sweet. Don't bring the after grapes. Because the after grapes will be gleaned by foreigners and strangers. But pluck the one that I need, the first ripe grapes. It was a season. I prophesy. That this is your season. Lord, I pray as everyone hear my voice today. That I've been waiting for their season. I decree, oh God, that this is their season. And this is their time. Lord, there is no more delay. We wait and we wait on you. And Lord, we just decree that these days that are upon us, is a, somebody say it's our season. But the reason why this is also prophetic is because uh, the end of July and the first week of August was the best time to invest this. So this is a prophetic season for us. Are you hearing me, church? So this month, before the, year, before the month ends, uh, tell the Lord God, uh, I'm waiting for my first ripe grape. Are you hearing me, church? I'm waiting for my testimony. I'm waiting for my breakthrough. I'm waiting for my promotion. I'm waiting for my elevation. I'm waiting for my laughter. I'm waiting for my shine. Uh, I'm waiting for the hand of the Lord. Uh, I'm waiting for my laughter. I'm waiting for my peace. I'm waiting for my marriage. I'm waiting for my children. I'm waiting for my job. I'm waiting for my promotion. I'm waiting for my business. I'm waiting for the word of the Lord. Somebody say, I'm waiting. We're waiting and this is our season. The Bible says, so they went up from and went up and spied the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob near the entrance of Hamath or Lo Amath. I don't have the time to explain this name. The word Zin in the Hebrew means flat, it's a flat land. Then the, the word Rehob speaks of uh, a big space. Then the word, um, the word Amath is meant to be Lo Hamath, it means a fortress. Some translation tells you, La or Lo, Hamath, a fortress. What the Lord, what Moses was saying to them, you're going to go through a season of a flat land. Then you're going to come into a season of a bigger space. Then you're going to come into a season of a fortress. A fortress means that your walls are fortified. And, and for, for a lot of us right now, our land might be flat. And things might be flat. Can I release this word? Your finances might be flat. Your home might be flat. Maybe your health is flat. Maybe nothing is working in your favor flat. Maybe the people that once loved on you, they don't love you anymore flat. Maybe you look at your bank account, it's flat. You look at your home, it's flat. You open your fridge, it's flat. You can't pay no rent, everything is flat. But the Bible says they move from flatter they went to a place called space somebody says space huh? they moved from flat to space you felt like God abandoned you you felt like God left you alone you felt like you've lost the battle God has moved you from flat to space but in the end he moved from space to an even fortress ladies and gentlemen the Lord is building a wall around you no devil can take the blessings no devil can steal your shine no devil can make you weep the Lord is changing your story from nothing to everything say yes Lord it was it was flat now it's no longer flat I've come to tell someone in this place that looks like life has been flat for you you've done everything and it's been flat you've looked at your account have you seen a flat account before you know when account is flat You know, I like, I like swollen accounts. And many of you, you are, you are like that. Relationship is flat. You've done everything to make it work. It's not working flat. Life is flat. Have you seen flat health before? 
You're going back and forth every single day to the GP. They put you on medication every single time. Your life is flat. Nothing is working. But I like how the Lord transitioned from flat to big to spacious. The Lord is saying, let me prophesy to that account that is stubborn. <laughs> that account that is stubborn, uh, that refuses to grow up. <laughs> that account that is stubborn, that keeps staying flat. Uh, let me speak to that stubborn account uh, that says you'll be on this level. I prophesy that the Lord is opening new doors for you. New jobs for you. Elevation for you. Promotion for you. Say yes, Lord. I decree and I prophesy everyone in this place the devil will not take your money the devil will not take your finances the devil will not take your peace the devil will not take your child say yes Lord say yes Lord say yes Lord be seated The move, the move, someone is moving, someone is moving from flat, from flat, from flat, from flat, from flat, from flat, from flat. Look at your neighbor, say I'm moving, say I'm moving from flat. So fortified. So I'm moving from flat to fortified. So I'm moving from flat, from flat, from flat, from flat to fortified, 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 fortified. Hey! I'm moving! I'm moving! I'm moving! I'm moving! I'm moving! Oh, be seated. I'm moving, 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 I'm moving. Be seated. Watch God. Watch God move. Taking you from nothing uh, to everything. Uh, no more flat, fortified. No more flat, fortified. I'm fortified. I'm fortified. Uh, my children fortified. Uh, my money fortified. Uh, my job fortified. Uh, my life fortified. Uh, my health fortified. Uh, I'm fortified. 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 I'm fortified. Be seated. Woo. Be seated. It took them from a flat land. It took them from a flat land to a fortified land. I prophesy the remainder part of the year, 2022. Hear the word of the Lord. Fortified. Fortified. Fortified.
please be seated. <laughs> I, I pray I, I pray I, I, I finish this today. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Your land is not flat, church. <laughs> the book place, you're not flat, church. Your finances are not flat, church. Your health is not flat, church. Say 45. The devil thought that you're gonna thought you're gonna quit. The devil thought that he's won the war against you and say that your life is just flat. But watch God move. God is about to change that story from flat to fortified. Say, I'm fortified. I'm fortified. I'm fortified. Say, fortified. 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 Fortified, fortified. Sam, the Lord said, uh, you've seen the disappointment that were before you. And you've asked the Lord God doors and doors and doors. Uh, Sam, the Lord said, the doors seem to be suspended for a season. And sometimes you feel like, God, I thought you told me. There was a time I saw in the spirit like Tuesdays that you prayed. Uh, you gathered entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, and you prayed on the Tuesdays. Uh, and for some reason, it looked like God has abandoned you. Uh, but I had the Lord lift you up with his right hand, Samuel. Uh, and God says, watch me do a miracle in the days to come, Samuel. Uh, you will see, can you stand up? You will see God move in your life. Uh, God will change your story. Uh, and God will give you a reason uh, to stay fortified. 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 Somebody say, My land is not flat. My land is fortified. Oh, say my mind is fortified. My children fortified. The, the devil will not steal your money. Say fortified. We don't even know how we're going to see the next day. And the devil bring all sort of stuff in our face and make us feel like we've lost the war. But I hear the angel of the Lord say to tell the church, for I am fortifying your borders. Uh, the Lord is fortifying us uh, and stretching us. Uh, he's fortifying your marriage. He's fortifying your health. Uh, he's fortifying your job. Uh, he's fortifying your business. Fortifying your children. Uh, fortifying your mind. Uh, fortifying your home. Uh, fortifying your body. Uh, fortifying your healing. Uh, fortifying your prophecies fortify everything 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 is fortified fortified it's fortified 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 it's fortified 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 my goodness where you've lost before because you took too long to come into ease alignment 
Were you lost before? Because you jumped too soon. I see a divine alignment in the house. Lalaba kombali vasopadabada. For those that jumped before the time and those that procrastinated outside of the time, I see the hand of the Lord bringing both those that went before and those who delayed. You are coming into alignment. It's taking you from nothing to everything. From flat to everything. We see that quickly. I've got 26 minutes to go. And the Bible says, And they went through the south and came to Hebron, Ahima, Shishai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, we are there. Once you know the Anakites are the giants. The family of Goliath are called the Anakites. You see, there were giants in the land, but the Lord says, go spy the land. You see, the land you are entering is not a virgin land. It's not a bare land. There were enemies, but they have to be displaced. And a lot of you are afraid of that big giant because you say, Lord, I can't fight them. The Bible says they came to the valley of Eskel and they cut down a branch. <laughs> Catch this. They cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. Some of the promanganates and figs. The place was called the valley of Eskel because the cluster of which the men Israel cut down. And they returned from spying out the land. I'll read it again in verse 23. Then they came to the they came to the valley of Eskol. And they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they carried it between two of them on a pole. I don't know about you, but how can two men carry one grape? <laughs> it is not Tesco's or St. Bree's grapes. How can two men put a pole to carry one cluster? You know the reason why? Because when it is your time, the Bible says in the scriptures, by the mouth of two or three, a word is established. When you find the word two or three speaks of witnesses. <laughs> the same people who told you that nothing's going to work in your favor, get ready because they are about to witness. They are about to witness God's move. God is coming through for you. Watch God move. Watch God move. Watch God move. There will be witnesses. Ooh. You see, this miracle that is coming to you in this season, the Bible calls it a season of first ripe grapes. It is not a hidden miracle. Nah. It is a miracle that men will come and testify what God is doing in your life. Yeah. There are some breakthroughs you cannot hide. Even though you try to hide it, glory will reveal it. These guys carried a cluster on their shoulders. Too big a miracle. Too big a breakthrough. Do you know what it means for two men to carry it? It means that there's a weight of goodness w-e-i-g-h-t you see the quality of the weight is dependent on your weight see your w-a-i-t will determine your w-e-i-g-h-t and many of you have been waiting on god to move god says get ready for the weight of glory yeah. hear me again that men will surround you and say to you but how did god do this one you know there were some testimonies that don't make sense there are testimonies that do not make sense. How God turns things within a twinkle of an eye. That is the kind of testimony. The Bible says that two men put the grape on their shoulders. Uh, two of them on a pole. Uh, they could not they, carry, they put the grape on the pole. And guess what? Guess what? The Lord is bringing you to a place that your miracle will become a staple. Do you know that two men are, are, are Prophetic evidences of witnesses. Do you know that the that national tourist logo of Israel is that? Two men carrying a grape. That's a symbol for tourism. The symbol of Typhoid, Google it. The symbol of Israel's tourism are two men carrying a pole. 
a grip on the pole. Tourism. Tourism means a site of attraction. Are you hearing me, church? The miracle that is coming to you will attract the miracle that is coming to you uh, will attract men and uh, women uh, that you will be called the next tourist at you will be called uh, the next tourist attraction are you here in church oh my god you can imagine and they say listen come to London there is a tourist attraction called Bobby come to London there is a tourist attraction called Amanda your name will be called uh, tourist attraction say yes Lord that became the the sign of tourism in Egypt two men carrying a cluster of grapes you will be remembered hear me you will be remembered. This is not the end. This is a process. Get ready. God is about to bring to you freshness in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, two men carried it. The place was called the Valley of Eskel because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down and they returned from spying out the land. After 40 days. So this guy spent 40 days. Espionage. Spying the land. For 40 days. See, sometimes. God allows us to spy the land. To have a stick preview of the future. So that we can endure the process. If the Lord doesn't show you what the future looks like. What's the point? The Bible says Christ, for what was set before him, endured the cross. There is a cross that we have to go through in life. But one of the things that keeps us going is a sneak preview of our land that flowed with Mikanoni. Your land might be flat now. Get ready for an oversupply. It's happening. The Bible says in verse 26, I'm not going to take so long anymore. Now they departed and came back to Moses. Now they have to give their report. Now everyone who is a spy comes back with an intelligent report. All right, to spy the land. They have few train stations. They have the Victoria Line. They have the Central Line, the red one. They have the, I can't remember, I can't remember the trains anymore. My God. My goodness. That Circle Line. That's a slow one. The annoying one. The slow, annoying one. The green one. The green one. That long one that's annoying. I get angry every time. It's always breaking down every single time. That is, what's it called? This street, that one, yeah. It's not this, it's restricts. It's restrict line. Restricts you from, I don't know, that line, I get, when I was working back in the day, I, oh, I'm always late. It's either the driver is sick, or there's a, something, something's always wrong with that green line. Yeah, there, there's a green line. That's, a, that's one that just drives itself, DLR, you know. There, that's what you call the number 10. So they bring all the intel and tell their king or tell their whatever it is about the intelligent information. So these guys now, they've gone to spy the land and they've come with reports. I will allow you guys to spy your land in a few minutes. And you will see your reports. The Bible says, Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to come back, you know. I'm not going to come back. How, how will I spy a land and come back? <laughs> it's, like telling someone, it's like telling someone in Nigeria. <laughs> oh, just come to England and, and, and just look at things and come. Huh? <laughs> oh, just get a visa, come to London and just, you know, just look at the railroad and come back. Eh? A Nigerian. Hey. Oh, Lord. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. But the guy came back. The guys came back for some reason. Why? I guess the scripture is trying to tell us that although there is a promise, but there is first a process. If you jump into the product without the process, you will puncture the promise. Every one of us have to go through seasons of our lives where we ask God, why? Did they not prophesy that I'll be married? 
Did they not prophesy I'm going to have a child? Did they not prophesy I'm going to get a job? Why? You see, prophecy is waiting for process. Prophecy is already proclaimed and waiting. But we must go through the process to manifest it. So the Lord said to them, you know what? You will see the land, but you have to walk. You have to go through the process that the Bible says. Verse 27. Then they told him and said, we went to the land that you sent us. Truly, it flows with milk and honey. Truly, the land is good. Truly, it has all the blessings in it. Truly, what the prophet said was true. Truly, I saw my husband. Truly, I saw my health. Truly, my bank account is fat. It's true. It's true. It's true. We, we saw everything. It, it, it's true. And, and this is the fruit. It's our evidence. This is the fruit of the land. You, you can see that. Although, it says, nevertheless, one of the greatest enemy of your prophetic manifestation is the three-lettered word, B-U-T, but. Nevertheless. Lord, we saw all you said, but the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. The Anakites are the giants. See what they saw? The Amalekites dwell in the land and the south of the Etites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. If you notice, they all, they all they are seen are enemies. The Lord never said to you the land is without inhabitants. The Lord never said that the people in the land are just empty or just nothing. Nothing just happens. You have to fight for your breakthrough. And sometimes you have to fight giants. But all these guys saw were the giants and the Anakites. The Bible says, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession. There are two types of people here. The Bible says, And for we are well able to overcome. I look at the word overcome. I try to look at the, the word in its nicest first century word uh, terminology. The word overcome is not what we use right now here. The word overcome is a military term. We say that we are well able to conquer them and make a settlement. Hear me? Everyone say to them, the land is big. The land has nothing. Oh, the, there were giants in the land. What's the point going? You know, it's like telling you, um, the Lord said to study this course because I see you make millions from this curse. Apostle, <laughs> it's too much time. It's, it's 14 hours a day. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't it be 14 hours if you'd be a millionaire? Right. No, 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 no. Why do you think the devil fights you? Because he understands that once you're obedient to prophecy, manifestation happens. Oh, the Lord said to do this curse for two months. Apostle, there's no time. That's the reason why God wants you to inconvenience yourself for two weeks. Your sleep. Because the breakthrough that is coming, listen, to whom much is given. We want God to give us the breakthrough, but not ready to put our knees in the ground. You have to fast for five days. Go dry for three days for this breakthrough. Apostle, that's, that's, I'm going to get ulcer. You won't get ulcer. Fast. You will get also fast for it. The men saw the giants. I want to ask you today because you're going to be a prophet. You're, 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 first, you're going to be a prophet yourself. And what you see is what you get. You must understand. The land is not free of giants. But the land also has make and honey. So you only get what you focus on. If you shut your eyes and pray. Trust me. The Bible says that. And, and the Lord said to Peter, come. And Peter began to walk on, on water. And when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. He will only capture what you focus on. You're probably going to see giants or you'll see your miracles. You're probably going to see pythons or you see your breakthrough. You can only get what you see. The Bible says, but we are more than able. Somebody say more than able. For we are more than, we overqualify to overcome this. What is the one thing that seems to be a giant in your life? 
What is the one thing that seems to be too big for you to comprehend in prayers? The Lord is saying that you are more than able. When God promises you a land, it's because he knows you have the victory already. I mean, God will not promise you something he knows you won't win. It's promised us victory already, but you have to fight the war. Are you hearing me, church? And sometimes, some victories are called pyrrhic victory. Sometimes, after the war, you have to limp. Sometimes, you might get some bruises. Sometimes, you might get home. Listen, my wife might testify of you. She might, tell, she might tell the truth. I don't tell you what I do on, on Mondays when I go home. After every deliverance service, I have to fight with some stuff. I don't start, sometimes I go home, I'm downstairs all through Monday. And my eyes are open, dealing with some stuff. You cast out demons, they come and wait for you at home. And your eyes are open. Pops, are you not sleeping? If you understood. You've seen me before, sometimes you see blood, blood clots in my eyes. Eyes are red. Demon comes to you and tells you, all right now, you've exercised us. We are going to trouble you. This is the court ministry. Please, if God didn't call you, don't go. I beg you. If you did not hear, not, not from, from, if you did not hear from God yourself, run from it. That you just set some people free, cast out demons, and you go home, you're not sleeping. And the devil is going to traumatize you. Ministry. And the bad thing about it is that the same people that you have delivered turn back and kill you. You know, you know, sometimes you just have to laugh at church. Just, sometimes you just laugh. You know, when you see church people do something, sometimes like, <laughs> you know, you need to lack words. For we are more than able to overcome. You are more than able, Patrick, to overcome these things. See, you don't know how much power you have until you're confronted with an opposition. And that he goes so far. You don't know how powerful you are until you face a demon face to face. Car pray is super here. Sometimes when we pray some very crazy prayers, see, let me tell you why I pray some prayers. Maybe because I'm a prophet, right? The reason why I pray so aggressively, because I see the demon hold it in, in his hands. I mean, I see demon hold my breakthrough in his hands. I mean, I'm seeing it face to face. You know, the reason why sometimes you don't pray, you pray very posh. Oh, Lord, thank you. Because you, you, because you haven't seen your breakthrough. So, so you're, you're bougie praying. If the Lord opens your eyes, you see the devil holding your breakthrough in his hands like this. Ah. So sometimes when we pray, kapala, panteleba, kofatatatata. We see what we see. Don't judge my prayers until you understand what I saw. Don't judge my prayer. Until you understand that I will not let you know, no, you will not. We're gonna fight. I'm, I'm ending soon. The Bible says, the Bible says in verse number 31, but the man who had gone up with them with him said, We are not able. Uh, your company matters. The people around you that always tell you you're not able to. I want to start a business, you're not able to. You know those friends that's always negative? Always, you know, no, 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 no. Always knowing you. The guy said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. A bad report. No, that's not your portion. No bad report for you today. They gave a bad report. Bible said of the land with their spies that say the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in the land are of great stature the Anakites great stature there we saw the giants the descendants of Anak came from the giants and we were like grass catch this look at the last verse last part verse 33 I'm ending with that and we were catch this so what I said we were like grasshoppers in our own sight in our own sight so we were in their sight I'll say it again there we saw the giants the descendants of Anna came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and also 
And we were in their side. Hear me? The right is meant to be a semicolon there. <laughs> See what they meant. We were grasshoppers in our sight because we were grasshoppers in their sight. We are grasshoppers, so they saw us as grasshoppers. Say it again. We are grasshoppers, so they looked at us and saw us as grasshoppers. The devil will only size you based on how you size yourself. You hear it again. You hear it again. The devil is afraid of you until you put yourself low. We are small, so they saw us small. We are broke, so they saw us broke. Uh, we are sick, so they saw us sick. Uh, the devil doesn't have a testimony of you until you have a poor testimony of yourself. Uh, that's why this day, uh, you're going to tell the devil, uh, I am not broke. Uh, I am not sick in my body. I am not in lack. Uh, I am moving from one place to another. I am growing from... Are you hearing me, church? The devil can only win the war against you based on how you lost the war against yourself. We were like grasshoppers. Grasshoppers are not seen. We are tiny in our eyes. So therefore, this is just tiny. But you know I like prophetic churches because you know how to change words. I am a millionaire. So they see me as a millionaire. I am healed in my body. So they see me as healed in my body. I am actually elevated. So they see me elevated. I am having my breakthrough today. So they see me have my breakthrough today. As a man thinketh in his heart. As a man thinketh in his heart. As a man thinketh in his heart. Let me tell you what the devil will tell you today. Today the devil will look at you and say, yes, you are blessed. He will look at you and say, yes, you are rich. Oh, yes, there's no sickness in your body. Why? Because the devil can only repeat what I first said. And I refuse to give him any reason to recite my frustration. No way. Would you rise up on your feet today? And you want to confess some prayers? No longer would they look at me and say to me, oh, sorry. You know, you know, you know what? I, listen, 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 listen. I just hear this in the spirit. I come against that spirit of pity. I come against that spirit of pity. When people look at you and the first thing they do is pity you. I pray against that spirit that attracts pity ah when people are attracting favor i decree and i prophesy in the name of jesus there is no pity in my household in the name of jesus are you ready to pray are you ready to pray all right catch this maybe three prayer points you're done but i want to give you an opportunity to spy your land you will be your prophet. He will spy what you've been praying for. Spy your breakthrough. Spy your elevation. While you're there, get ready to see God's hand in your life, God's promotion. And just get ready to see. I'll say it before, before I go, I'll say it again. Be careful what you see. Be careful that you don't see demons and frustration. They are, they are definitely in that space but I refuse to see them right now while your eyes are closed I want you to see the breakthrough the Lord has for you just look at it what is it you're asking the Lord is it married to blessing see the wedding ring is it children see them is it promotion see yourself getting a new job a better job a better pay as you can see you can conceive see it See it one more time. Be a prophet today. The devil will try to obliterate your sight, but the Lord is giving you even the vision of what you are meant to be. See your children. See your home. See your job. See your career. Now begin to prophesy what you see. Prophesy what you see. Prophesy what you see. Amen. Look at me. Look at me. 
as your eyes are closed, I'm seeing all these breakthrough, and I'm seeing my home, and I'm seeing the kids, and I'm seeing the properties, and I'm seeing. I, 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 but guess what? Seeing it is not enough. I have to call it into being. Now that you've seen it, call it out. Bible says, by the word of the Lord, the word was framed. Frame what you've seen. Close your eyes and prophesy into a being what you've seen. Come on, pray, church. Pray. Prophesy what you've seen. Prophesy what you've seen. I see my elevation. I see my promotion. I see the joy of the Lord. I see my peace. I see my children. Map the land and prophesy. Map the land and prophesy. Map your 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 land and prophesy. You're not praying, church. Prophesy. Map your land and prophesy. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Map your land and prophesy. 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 See your land that flows with me, can honey, and prophesy. See your land that flows and prophesy. I see my children. I see my wife. I see my husband. I see my job. I see my home. I see my car. I see my business. I see my health. Prophesy, church. You've got literally one minute to go. I've got 59. Nine seconds. He pele beso poro foto. He yes Lord. 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 Prophesy. 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 Prophesy, prophesy, map your land, map your land, map your land, map your land, and take by force, take your breakthrough, take your elevation, take it by force, 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 hallelujah, 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 yes, Lord. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the that is who you are. Way maker, way maker, promise keeper, that is who you are. Waymaker, 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 say, Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper. My God, Waymaker, Waymaker, say, promise keeper. Hold on. Let this song be a prophetic song for you. See the Lord making a way for you. Where there seems to be no way. See the Lord clearing the path for you. What the devil say that you will not prosper. See the Lord opening the space for you. And the Lord saying, I'm making a way for you. It's making a way. I'm making a way. See the Lord dealing with the Atites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and all for your sake. Not from your belly sickness. Way make a sing. We we'll say, say, say. Way make a miracle worker. Promise keeper. My God. My God. My God. We we'll say. Miracle worker, promise light, 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 light. We map, we map, we map, we map, we map. Way maker, promise light. That is who. That is who. Way. My God, way, 
way, way, way maker. Now everyone in this place that have spied your land, say my land flows with milk and honey. Say 2022, you are my good land. Say 2022, from this moment, you are my good land. And you will flow with milk and honey. 2022, I prophesy elevation, promotion, good health. Wealth, wealth, healing, healing marriage, marriage, children, children joy. joy. Say 2022, I prophesy, my land shall flow. My land shall flow. Do you believe that word today? Do you believe the Lord is taking you from nothing to everything? So I decree that my land is flowing already. Say already, already. Already, already. Say flow, flow, flow. Say flow already. 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 Waymaker, we say.